This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Dun 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 dun. No. Dun. no. Y all, y all, just this stop. This is a sham. Welcome to DBL. It's Monday, y'all, December 6th. I'm Tori in for Jeff, and I'm here with Al and Erica. Yay. I can't wait. I'm trying to be Jeff. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> they, cool. You're not doing Okay, great. Okay. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, stars of the upcoming film Don't Look Up, which looks amazing, walked the red carpet at the world premiere in New York last night. And Jennifer Lawrence, who is expecting her first child with her husband, wore this floor-length gold Dior gown with a cape. Her co-star, Leonardo DiCaprio, looked dapper in a dark suit, but everyone's talking about Jonah Hill, who showed up with his girlfriend wearing matching powder blue suits. Love it. I was gonna say, Erica, I, if I had to put money on this, I would say you love it. Love it. I absolutely Talk to us. adore it. And the thing was, like, Jennifer looked like a goddess. A goddess. Like, I love her because she can play, like, goddess vibes, or she could play, like, don't bleep with me vibes. Right, right. But this matching powder blue suit, I would do this with my husband in a heartbeat. And oh, they would absolutely. Kill. And they would kill. Absolutely. It's a whole vibe. Absolutely. It's like fashion is meant to evoke discussion. It's like walking art. And the idea that, like, yeah, I know a lot of people will find it to be a little corny, like matching with your significant other. But, like, fashion should be about a moment like when my husband and I get dressed and we're like really getting dressed to go somewhere there's like a whole vibe that happens before we walk out the door like when we walk into the place where we're going yeah we're here I want to be like that yeah I stumble and fall into places <laughs> <That's how laughs> place. Tori apologizes her way into yeah. place. I'm, I'm sorry. so sorry I fell yes yeah, so I'll pay for that yeah. was it is it a Britney Justin moment the denim the double denim anything no no I thought it was I thought it was a a, a cool progressive fashion moment and Erica it's weird that you brought up yourself because I was going to bring you up me too like when I look at pictures of you and your husband and I was speaking with you a couple weeks ago off camera and you said when we have date night, we get dressed, we put our clothes on and we go out and we, it's not just like, oh, this is our first date. I want to impress this person. It's like, this is our 1000th and first date. And we still want to impress ourselves and impress Each when other. we go out. And there is a thing, it's not spoken. But when a couple like that walks in any room, people notice. And they might not say anything, but they'd be like, that, that couple is presenting a united front. So, I mean, that's where we all need to get. Plus, black folks, we've been matching forever. Like, <laughs> well, you, you know. Go, come, picnics, homecoming. Come on. Matching? Talk to All me. that. Ma yes. Well, oh, matching yes. or just showing up. Like, if my grandmother, honestly, to, honest to God, the biggest reason is if my grandmother was still alive and I was going to places that she only dreamed of going, mm -hmm. showing up like whatever, however, I feel the same way about flights. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a responsibility to show up. Gladys Knight would say showing up is, or dressing up is how you show respect for your audience or how you show respect for where you are and the fact that you're there. I love So that. yeah, that is really important to me. I need yes. to step it up a little. Just so you know, Jonah Hill had the blonde hair because he's playing Jerry Garcia. That's gonna be cool. In the new, for Grateful Dead, if people didn't know who Jerry Garcia was. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. All right, speaking of couples on the red carpet, Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly turned heads recently. Speaking of a couple that walks in and has a moment. So the couple appeared at MGK's, oh, I guess that's his little cool nickname, nail polish launch event wearing matching black outfits. But get this, they were chained to each other by their pinky fingernails. That's brave. <laughs> that's, hey, that's punk rock. Is it? Yes. Is it a little clingy or is that punk? No, I think it, I think it's punk. And if you look at their 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 whole vibe, yeah, right. I think that's kind of what they're going for. They are that kind of young couple that almost seems like they don't go together. Actually, the rapper slash rocker with the beauty queen actress. That's like I but think they it totally works. go together. I'm saying it works. She's and like I think it. he's brought out her like how she really feels I inside agree. because how she presents to the world is this kind of you know kind of run of the mill but gorgeous actress. I've never seen her like that. As in, I like in Transformers? Always, you thought no, she was going to no, be like a I punk I think rocker? that she played that just like Angelina Jolie has played some parts that aren't really ingrained in who she is or how she identifies. But I always uh, found Megyn Kelly, or Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Very different person. Megyn Kelly and Megan Fox. Megan Fox <laughs> and Brian Austin Green to be kind of like the yin and yang. Mm. These two with Machine Gun Kelly, um, they, <laughs> <laughs> this amazing 
make more sense to me. <laughs> Machine I, Gun I love, Kelly Ripper. That's yeah, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like Wheel of Fortune, like before and after. Yeah. Like Machine Gun Kelly. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I find these two to be uh, very much together. I I, they make sense to me. My biggest thing is that pinky nail. Have you ever gotten a long nail or any nail caught in anything? Oh, it hurts. It me. hurts, like, like especially the pinky. The pinky's the worst. So I thought that was like a real commitment. That's real punk. I will say I like his new. He's doing like I like his male nail polish. I like this blending and fluidity in the makeup and cosmetics. Good for him. I think that's really cool. Oh, a lot of the, a lot of the young rappers are wearing young yeah. rappers for me. For like rappers, they're young to me. But they were a, a black fingernail polish yeah. and like it's a, it's been a movement for I a like long that. time. So. I like that. Very cool. Very cool. And the black tongue. Are we into that? I didn't see that. We're not into I'm that. glad. Black I didn't. tongue. Machine Gun Kelly likes to paint his tongue black. With what? Oh. I'm not quite sure, but. Not into it? I should have. No. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. great. All right. Move over, Taylor Swift. Singer Grimes has written a breakup song about her ex, and that is Elon Musk. So Grimes and Elon broke up earlier this year after three years together. They also share a 19-month-old son. I can't pronounce his name. In her new song, Player of Games, she apparently shades Elon by calling out his love of video games and space travel. Watch this. Thoughts and do we think Elon will come back? Elon's a Twitter, a tweet tweeter. Yeah, um, <laughs> these two always seem to me, although they were relatively quiet, it's not like yeah, we heard right, a right. whole lot from them, but I just got this very strong sense of like nuclear war. Mm. Like that's when you were good. That's a very well, strong no. sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> How would you I describe mass this destruction. Yeah, mushroom no, clouds. Just, there's a lot of energy there coming from both of them. And they both are very unapologetic about where their passions and their, and truly like their gifts to the world lie. Mm -hmm. So I think anytime you are with someone like that, it can create, or two people like that, creates kind of like this brewing nuclear war. It's a combustible couple for sure. Yeah. What do you think? I, I look at the situation, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are watching us right now that are kind of in a similar situation, and maybe they entered into a relationship without knowing that the partner that they decide, that they chose was already in a relationship with their work. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what Elon Musk is and was, he's in a relationship with space travel and Tesla. future and Tesla. And so anybody or anything that comes into his universe is gonna have to orbit around that. And I think she's like, well, now it's me and you. And, let's, and he's like, well, I'm gonna be working. I'm gonna be gone for three weeks and I'll be back. And then we'll talk about, you know, what we're gonna do for the holidays. But I think she kind of always felt like she didn't get the love that she felt like she deserved. And I think those are the lyrics that we just yeah. heard. But I think, that happens more times than not. It might not be Elon Musk, but it's gonna be, a lot. sometimes people love what they do or their hobby more than yeah. their partner. And yeah. it's not a slight on their partner, it's just how they're wired. I do know one thing is that breakup songs are back. Am I right? Yeah. Everybody, did they ever personal. leave? That's true. Oh man, good breakup. Yeah, talk about something relevant. Crying know, breakups are always gonna happen. Always. Coming up on DBL, the smash hit My Girl went platinum. And it's all thanks to this man. We're talking to the founder of The Temptations, Mr. Otis Williams. But first, Martha Stewart has a new man in her life. Who is he? We'll talk about it after the break. It's not Al. Mm. Closed captioning provided by... I have a question for you guys in terms of breakup songs by professional singers. And this is this is coming from somebody that's a comic, so I have thought about this. I'll text you. Yeah, okay. All right, girl, good Hi, to see you. You look wonderful. I feel like, you know what? I feel like I was crazy anticipation of the work today, and then you show up, and then it's like, okay, I can go go check on my kid now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets to do that, so we're all blessed. You look so. beautiful. Okay. Say hi to Kinsley. Oh I will. I'll bring her in when things get less crazy. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Let's I was, look up greatest breakup songs. I was well. I was gonna say in terms of uh, like, just is it ethical to write a breakup song? As is, and this is where where I'm coming from as a comic. If I break up with my partner, 
I have a platform right. to go talk about my side. I can get on stage and say whatever I want about them, and I have access to right. that. I have access to a television. Sure. Is it cool if that my partner doesn't have that? I have a, uh, yes, I'll, I have a response based on my situations. If you were talking about relationships when you first met your partner, mm -hmm. and that was a part of like your identity That's as a, a comic, mm -hmm. then is it fair for someone to think that that should all change just because you two aren't together anymore? I always say like, pay attention to what people are doing before you commit to them, because those things aren't gonna change. Like, mm. I was, I've done radio oh, yeah. for like, most of my life, I've always talked about my life, whether I was dating or whether I was engaged, whether I was married or whether I was divorcing. Like, that was a part of the gig. That's a part of what they hired me to do. So, of course, I think there's a, a way to do it in which it's not just blatantly disrespectful. You could also be But I don't think you should be asked to do that. You could also be sued for defamation if they're not a public. However, you're celebrating Make DBL a part of your holiday cheer. I can tell she was feeling so so. Blush for Alfonso. <laughs> this is the most wonderful time of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. DBL is always all new every day. Welcome back to DBL. I got some tea, y'all. Yay. Thank you, Al. Martha Stewart confessed to Andy Cohen that she is a secret boyfriend, but she's not saying who it is, but she did reveal her holiday party do's and don'ts. Take a look. Is it okay to re-gift? No. Really? <laughs> no, you always get caught. Um, if someone says no gifts, is it then rude to still bring a gift? Absolutely not. You must take a gift. <laughs> How do you deal with guests who always seem to overstay their welcome? Well, you just say, you know, I'm going to bed now, so I'll see you at, you know, next party. <laughs> <laughs> she seemed to have a no pain there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> holiday, who, who says when the holiday party starts or ends? Yeah, right. It's going, looks like it's going on at a lot of different times. <laughs> and good for her. I don't care. She's not driving a school bus. She right. can have a few before the show starts. That's exactly what well, it's, it's, it's watch what happens live. That's right. the whole thing. There's, There's drinking on games yeah, on right. the show. Well, That's she it. won that game. <laughs> uh, I'll just say this, Erica, I don't know. Do I agree with the no to regifting because if you have something you know you're never going to use and you're right. like Al's into photography he could use this lens or what why wouldn't you regift that I do not say no to regifting mm -hmm. um, I've I feel like I was brought up that way because everybody's grandmother or someone auntie somebody had a closet that when it was time to give your teacher a, a gift for school mm -hmm. then they'd be like go on in that closet check the yes. second and the third <laughs> row and and then you know there's probably a candle or a bar of soap or, or something. something. You can get, you know? like a, like a teacher. It's like, bank shaped like an apple. It's, like I, it's if, something. It's yeah. something. And I think it's a really important one. What do you do with things that you can't use? Like, do you not give them to someone who can actually use them? I agree. I'm dealing with a new philosophy in my life of I don't need any more stuff. I just don't need more stuff. And for Hanukkah, really, I was like, don't get me a lot of stuff. Get me donations or charity or something like that. And so when you get a gift that you don't like, I see it as like recycling it. Like mm. it's good. It's putting it's, it's it back for the Earth. universe. Yeah, yeah, I don't need it, but I certainly don't want it to go away. So I'm fine with regifting. Now, Martha Stewart, she never has to. Re Bigger question: yeah. How do you guys let people know that the party's over? You know, it, you throw a lot of parties. The Midwest people they say this. They go like this. Well. <laughs> they hit their hands they and go, nope. And apparently that's the sign in the Midwest they, that they it's do. over. They really I didn't know that. I went to yeah. Michigan and everyone goes, well, and I'm like, okay, get out of here. We gotta go. <laughs> I have never <laughs> ever thought of that. My dad would just start to like put the dishes and stuff yeah. into the, the dishwasher. The mm -hmm. yeah. Start turning off lights. <laughs> um, but people could, might think the party's really starting now. Like, all right. <laughs> 
Yeah. Turn the music up. Yeah. How, you, how would you get out of a situation or get people out of your house that you wanted to get out? Oh, I, I just say it. Especially back when I used to drink, I'd be like, hey, that's going to do it, bro. <laughs> like, I would just let them know, like, that's going to be the end. I can't, I can't, we can't play this game. Yeah. But now that I'm sober, I don't know how to figure out a diplomatic way to be like, hey, <laughs> just I, say, love well, you. I love you. <laughs> well, I love you. I love you. Things have to end. We're out here, Just like too. this segment. Just like this segment coming up on DBL. We got Otis Williams from The Temptations. He is here, and you do not want to miss it. Watch out, there on the beach. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead, go ahead, it's your guys. turn. Getting a picture with Santa is one of those classic Christmas traditions for families with young children. But recent headlines say there aren't enough Santas to meet the demand this year. So let's verify. Is there a Santa shortage for the 2021 Christmas season? We went to these sources for an answer. Mitch Allen, founder of HireSanta.com, a site where people can hire Santas, said the Santa shortage is a basic supply and demand issue. There are just fewer people than there are jobs. Allen said his company has seen a 120% increase in Santa requests this year compared to pre-pandemic levels. We just can't meet that demand. Uh, and unfortunately, we're having to turn it, turn away business right now. IBRBS, formerly known as the International Brotherhood of Real Bearded Santas, is an organization that represents more than 1,800 Santas and Mrs. Clauses. Following a year of mostly virtual visits with Santa, Stephen Arnold, IBRBS's president, said this holiday season, demand is up 20% for his group compared to 2019. Parents want to have that one-on-one -on -one experience. But while demand for Santa is up, supply has declined. Allen said the number of available Santas for his business is down by about 10% compared to 2019, which he attributes in part to COVID-19. Last we were looking, uh, over 335 Santas um, have passed away due to COVID and other reasons. Concern for personal safety is another reason some Santas are opting to sit out. In a survey of 373 Santas, 16% of respondents said they're planning to take the 2021 season off because of the pandemic. So we can verify, yes, there is a Santa shortage for the 2021 Christmas season. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytill. To receive daily fast facts to your phone, text Verify to 202-410-8808. And to sign up for our newsletter, visit verifythis.com slash email. Welcome back to DBL. That was the Temptations platinum hit, My Girl. And earlier, we talked with none other than the baritone legend and Temptations founder himself, Mr. Otis Williams. That's today's Chatting with the Stars. How you doing? Uh, I bow down to you all. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. How you guys doing? We're good. I'm sorry I sung over that. Yeah, you should apologize, apologize. for yes. that. Okay, apologize, <laughs> sir. Uh, well, y'all should start a group. You sound good. <laughs> Otis is too kind. Yeah, the non-temptations. Okay, <laughs> after 60 years of making music, Otis, you're still touring, even now. So I wanted to know for you, yes. what is it like performing now in 2021 versus back in the 60s? Is, is the crowd different? Talk to me. I must say the crowd is really uh, they're very intelligent about what's happening in show business. When we started out during the 60s, just us being on the stage, they would go crazy. But now they are more in tune. Oh, yeah, they phoning it in, you know, so they can tell if we're faking the funk, which we don't fake the funk, you know, we give it to them because we know they're very knowledgeable and uh, intuitive about what's happening today. Smart. Well, Mr. Williams, I just want to say on behalf of myself and my colleagues, we all came to see you, Otis. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? I thank you for that because I asked Leon about that. He said, Otis. Leon was the guy that played uh, David Ruffin. Mm -hmm. He said, that was an improv. He said, the, the, the scene was going so good, I just threw it in. <laughs> I said, yeah, but Leon, we were at my play uh, in New York and uh, it was packed. So the people said, oh, this, oh, this. And I said, hey, Leon, they came to see me now. Look, okay. and he said, you got me, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you let him know, because yeah. just to put it to context for people who are living under a rock somewhere, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis, <laughs> is a classic line from Temptations and it, uh, the movie, or I should say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, how did yeah. you feel about that when it went so incredibly viral? 
Well, you know, I, I almost met it with mixed emotion. But, you know, when you're dealing with the public and things can just really go haywire. And uh, I looked at it as, as fun of it. Even now when we're on stage, I said, well, you know, uh, they said that nobody, ain't nobody coming to see you. And so I said, yeah, but look at everybody in here now. Exactly. And they would applaud. So that's I turned it exactly. into a joke. That, yeah. That's beautiful. Uh -huh. You're the last surviving member of the original lineup. So what is it like performing next to this generation of Temptations? And do you ever have flashbacks to the old days while on stage? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the classic five will always be remembered. And the guys that's helping me carry the banner now, I adore them because they know they're stepping in the uh, legendary shoes yeah. that was there before they came along. So they're doing a marvelous job, and I'm very happy with the guys that I have now. All right, I have to ask this question. It's a very serious question. Which Temptations member was most popular with the ladies? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get asked that all the time. Do you? Well, I must say Sweet Eddie. Sweet Eddie Sweet. Kendricks, because he was tall, nice looking, and he had a beautiful okay. tenor voice. And then I must <laughs> say uh, uh, Melvin Franklin, nice. because Melvin had that deep, profundo bass, and uh, yeah, yeah. he was such a gregarious personality. They they loved to hear Melvin talk, you know. So uh, uh, we kind of, uh, David and Paul and myself, we kind of took second seats uh, <laughs> compared to those two. <laughs> but nevertheless, we all got paid the same money, so it wasn't that much difference. Hey, <laughs> I'm sure there was equality all around. That's right. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a musical coming out about you and the Temptations called Ain't Too Proud. So what's it like watching yes. your life played out on stage? You know, when I first saw it up in Berkeley, I was moved to tears. So when we did it in New York uh, on Broadway, so as I'm sitting in the audience, so they're looking at the play, but I found them looking, doing like this here crane neck and to see if I'm showing emotions mm. and whatever. And I would look and I say, yeah, I'm crying too because to see my life story being portrayed, it touched. You know, it's not all about mm. the, the dancing and the choreography. There are some very serious moments in there where I started losing members and disagreements. Uh, so it's got depth, not only from the music of, uh, possibilities, but from the actual life that we live. Mm. Otis, I, I just have to say what a pleasure it is that you're here today. Thank you for being here. But we want to get to your new album, The yes. Stories Otis Has. Wow. I wish I could go out to dinner with you. What is the new album called and what makes it so special, Otis? I want it's called uh, 60. The Temptations has been around for 60 years. And the first single from that CD is uh, written by my friend, one of the best lyricists of all time. Smokey Robinson. Aww. And the name of it, is it going to be yes or is it going to be no? What touching is heard. So it's very sexy. Nice. Especially ah, when you said But he said yeah. it. I was like, okay. Oh, dim the lights, like, Can we play out? <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. That sounds amazing. Oh, my gosh. I wish we had more yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I know. You, what a pleasure. Yeah, Otis, thank I you so much for chatting with us. And congratulations on 60 years wow. of The Temptations. What a life thank well you. lived. And for everyone at home, you can share in the celebration by checking out their new album on temptationsofficial.com. You can even buy tickets for their musical, Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Time of The Temptations. My whole family is going to go. We'll be right back. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Williams. Sir. We came to see you, Otis. We came to see <laughs> you. Thank you, guys. Beautifully done. Thank you. We love you guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... you're celebrating make DBL a part of your holiday cheer. What's up, homie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can tell she was feeling a little something. Erica so blushed for Alfonso the girl. <laughs> Would you have been cooking naked? Cooking, yes, on our last show. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. Am I right? Say yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I got chills. Me too. Not clearly. DBL is always all new every day. Last month, the World Health Organization declared the Omicron variant a COVID-19 variant of concern because of its many mutations. As more cases emerge, some people on social media are questioning how researchers are detecting Omicron. So let's verify. Is there a new test to detect the Omicron variant? Our sources are the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and an infectious disease specialist in South Africa. Every COVID-19 variant has a unique genetic code, and researchers are constantly looking for new mutations. 
The WHO says one of the widely used PCR tests, which extracts genetic material from a nasal swab sample, is able to detect a unique marker that could indicate the Omicron variant. One of the genetic mutations in the spike protein, we can flag it um, from one of the specific PCR tests that we use to diagnose this infection. Those samples are then sent for genetic testing to confirm the presence of Omicron. So it's false that there's a new test to detect the Omicron variant. Researchers are using an existing PCR test to search for indicators of Omicron and confirm with genetic tests. For example, in the U.S., the CDC sequences about 80,000 samples every week, which is about one in every seven PCR positive cases. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. To receive daily fast facts to your phone, text VERIFY to 202-410-8808. And to sign up for our newsletter, visit verifythis.com slash email. A decision on the Supreme Court's latest abortion case is not expected for months, but if the conservative majority agrees with Mississippi's law, it would almost immediately have a major impact on a huge part of the country. 21 states could almost immediately ban or curtail access to abortions if the Supreme Court chooses to overturn or weaken Roe v. Wade. 12 states have so-called trigger laws that go into effect if Roe v. Wade is overturned or weakened. Most would ban abortion outright, while some include limited exceptions. For instance, back in June, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a new law that would almost immediately outlaw abortions and threaten doctors who perform them with life in prison or a $100,000 fine. And it's not just trigger laws. Another nine states will have pre-Roe abortion bans that could once again become enforceable if Roe v. Wade is struck down. The court isn't expected to release their final ruling until this summer. Welcome back to DBL. If you're looking to lose weight this holiday season, we've got the one thing you should do to speed up your metabolism metabolism. Don't speed up that word though, you'll say it wrong. It's time for a helpful healthcare tip presented by Health Markets, your insurance marketplace. According to doctors, there is one thing you should add to your morning routine to increase your metabolism and that is green tea. They say drinking a cup of green tea before breakfast puts your body into fat burning overdrive, providing you with more energy and allowing food to work more effectively as fuel. Now if you're looking to get health coverage, Health Markets can help you find a plan in minutes. Just call 1-800 390-9633 or log on to healthmarkets.com. We were looking at uh, the top 10 breakup songs of all time and Ringer has Purple Rain and Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone. Bill Withers, that's Bill right. Bill Withers is so good. Do you guys uh, have any good uh, breakup songs? I Want You Back, the Jackson 5. Mm, no. Someone Like You, Adele. Mm. I Will Survive. Yeah, that's a good one. Gloria. Those are like party songs, though. Unbreak, unbreak my heart. No. No. See, that's just disrespectful. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>